Hi, I'm Bruce Dawson, and I'm known for being a developer who does a lot of performance work. And in this talk, I'm going to explain how to use my favorite tool for investigating performance on Windows. This tool is called Event Tracing for Windows, or ETW. After watching this talk, you will know the basics of how to record and analyze ETW traces with a focus on the built-in sampling profiler. This video will get you well in the road to being able to understand performance problems that would otherwise be completely inexplicable. ETW works by instrumenting key systems within Windows. This instrumentation is present in shipping versions of Windows, starting, roughly speaking, with Windows Vista. ETW includes a high-quality sampling profiler to find out exactly where CPU time is going. Well, that's enough talking about Windows Performance Toolkit. Now let's use it. We're going to record a trace, we're going to analyze it, we're going to find a problem, and then we're going to work around the problem that we found. We'll start by running WPRUI from the Start menu. Just type in its name. Note that it needs to be elevated because ETW can record information from all processes and users on the system. Now, WPRUI has various configuration options, different types of resource analysis, and there's different logging options, either to memory or to file. But the great thing is the defaults are really solid. You can do most of your performance investigations with the default WPRI settings. Just launch WPRUI and click Start. With these default settings, and now it's time to explain tables. WPA tables let you find important patterns in enormous volumes of data. Understanding how to use them effectively, understanding the Zen of WPA tables is the most important thing you can learn about each W trace analysis. Proper use of tables is all about choosing the right columns and then making clever use of grouping, summation, and sorting. Well, that plus an understanding of what the underlying data really means. There are many columns in a typical table and they're not all shown by default. So, whenever you start using a new table, you should right-click on one of the column headers to see what types of data are available. Uh, we can do that now, and uh, we can immediately see there are quite a few additional columns. I happen to know that for investigating...